Hi, I'm Tim Aubrey from DMAD Marine Mammals Research Association and welcome to lesson 4 of our course for beginners to intermediate QGIS. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at the second part of our coordinate reference systems lecture and that's where we're going to be looking at the distortions that you get with different coordinate reference systems. Okay, we'll jump right in. Hi, welcome back to the second part of our coordinate reference systems lecture. Um, and the objectives of today's lesson are to learn a little bit more about the different types of projections and learn more about things that we need to be aware of. Now, map projections can never be exact representations of a spherical Earth at the most simple level because they're not a spherical Earth, they're a planar field or flat piece of paper. Um, and therefore, they must have either a distortion in angular conformity or distance conformity or area conformity. That is, they can't keep angles, distance and area all perfectly um, aligned. Uh, so if we have uh, perfect areas, we can't have perfect angles on a flat piece of paper. So we can't have both at the same time. Uh, and a projection may be a compromise of several um, or all of these characteristics. So that is, we might be distorting area, we might be distorting distance, or we might be distorting the angular conformity all at the same time, but within uh, an amount where the area is acceptable for our usage of the map. So an example of this is uh, the Robinson projection. Uh, and generally, we'll only use uh, a projection where we're uh, distorting all three, a small amount, when we're using world maps. So when we talk about map projections with angular conformity, we're talking about projections where north, east, south and west stay the same as if they're on a globe. So when they're on a globe, north is perpendicular to east, east is perpendicular to south, etc, etc. And when we bring this onto a paper map, we, uh, we see the same thing. And this is known as conformal or orthomorphic projections. Uh, these are really useful when the preservation of angles is important. So, for example, if we're doing meteorological or navigational tasks, uh, however, it's difficult to maintain angles at wider areas. Um, and so we should only really, really be using this for small portions of the Earth as it distorts area. Um, and it distorts area more the further you get away from your center point of your map. So it's not useful when area calculations need to be made, basically. Uh, and an example of a map projection with angular conformity is the Mercator projection, which you can see below. So the next category of maps is maps with distance conformity. Um, and projections that maintain distance are called equidistant projections. Uh, the map scale on most maps actually changes um, as you get further away from the central meridian. Um, but in an equidistant projection, it remains the same. So a map is equidistance when it represents the true distance between its center and anywhere else on the map. And that's the same from the center of this point on Earth and anywhere else on Earth. And uh, an example is the United Nations logo, and that uses the azimuthal equidistance projection. So you can see there on the right. Um, and these projections are generally used for seismic mapping uh, and radio mapping uh, as well as for some navigational purposes and obviously distance is really important in navigation and uh, an example is the the plate carry equidistant cylindrical projection which we've got here and it may not be immediately obvious uh, the difference between the two world projections that we've seen so i've just put them side by side on this um, and you can see the plate carry on the right and you can see the mercator on the left so you can see they are, they are quite substantially different actually so on the left we've got angular conformity and on the right we've got distance conformity uh, finally i'm going to talk about projection with equal areas uh, obviously these are useful where area calculations are going to be the the dominant calculation the do dominant analysis you're going to do with it um, but again, as the survey area extends, then 
our angular distortions are going to get greater. So we've got the inverse of the angular conformity here. So as we get further away from our center, then although area is remaining the same, our angular distortions are going to get greater. Uh, and, and we've got another example here, the mole wide equal area cylindrical projection. Um, so this is one where the area is, uh, is conformity is applied to. Um, so that's just a really quick run through of the all three. Uh, but please do bear in mind, firstly, projection is a really complex topic. Uh, there's literally hundreds of projections available and each is designed to represent a section of the earth as truly as possible. But for a lot of the more local projections, the further you get away from it, the more your distortion will be unacceptable. Uh, finally, many countries have their own projection system and uh, the data will be exchanged with the country uh, in the format. So basically, if you've got one person working uh, in one part of the country and another in the other, the data is all going to be on the same grid system and it will be exchanged in the same grid system. But for most of the time, and until you get sort of up to PhD level, you are likely to be told which system to work in. So don't worry about it too much, but it's certainly worth knowing about. Uh, thank you and uh, yeah, look forward to speaking to you next time.